Chapter 29.2 Calling for help you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 29, Calling for help, Part 2, Lin Mumu had only finished the call when Chen Fangya and Lu Yuanyuan were reaching their limit. When the man saw that Chen Fangya was playing him, he actually wanted to resort to force. Lu Yuanyuan was really loyal, and no matter what, strongly held on to An Xiaoqin, refusing to let him take her away. Even when Duan Haoyang forcibly broke Lu Yuanyuan's arm, she still refused to let go. Chen Fangya was also pushed to the side and fell on the ground. It seemed that he would fight until the end to take her away. Lin Mumu took the small bronze mirror in An Xiaoqin's bag and threw it at him. It exactly landed on Duan Haoyang's left eye. Duan Haoyang felt it so painful he had to cover his eye for a while. Who? Duan Haoyang also noticed Lin Mumu standing nearby, but he didn't think much of her, and merely treated it as a little girl's casual resistance, so he threatened. You're attacking a policeman. Are you aware of the consequences? I can take care of my girlfriend by myself, and all of you should scram, or else I'll bring you all to the station. Please read rightful translations by Atice at foxaholic.blog Duan Haoyang just finished his sentence when three patrolling policemen came over. Chen Fangya quickly called out to them. Police uncles, we are students of Beijing University. This person found our roommate beautiful and wants to drag her to the hotel, brother Duan. What happened? The three people obviously knew Duan Haoyang. This is a misunderstanding. These little girls are making trouble, Xiao Lu, you take them to the station to drink tea. I and your sister dot in dot law were slightly misunderstood. I can handle her myself. Tn. Go to the police station to drink tea means to have a meeting with security agents, to be warned to behave responsibly. Dot. It turned out to be sister dot in. Law. Those people also knew in Xiaoqin. They laughed mischievously and pulled Lu Yuanyuan. Lu Yuanyuan naturally refused to let go, but also took the opportunity to bite the arm of the thin high dot ranking policeman named Xiao Lu. Chapter 30.1 Mocking Smile, Part 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 30, Mocking Smile, Part 1, See, you guys didn't give us any face and were utterly shameless. Be careful, I, your father, will take you all to the police station. The long dark nights are lonely, I wouldn't mind if you guys were to accompany us cheerfully in the station. Xiao Lu was bitten and cursed crudely. He hurriedly took out his police truncheon and aimed at Lu Yuanyuan's head. Bump, dot Lin Mumu snorted and firmly spread her arm to receive the hit and protect Lu Yuanyuan. She originally wanted to punch Xiao Lu, he was not allowed to hit Lu Yuanyuan. The head was the most important body part, if she had any problems later, it would be too late for regret. Just before Lin Mumu could take action, she heard the sound of police cars behind her, so she could only drop the matter and protect Lu Yuanyuan with her arm. Please read rightful translations by Atice at foxaholic.blog Lu Yuanyuan was frightened and anxiously checked Lin Mumu's arm. When she released in Xiaoqin, her limp body was roughly taken away by Duan Haoyang and went straight towards Nandu Hotel. Oh, still unyielding. These soft and tender little girls, your father, likes this type of fresh and pure female student. Xiao Lu didn't expect a few female students to be so difficult to deal with, he lifted his truncheon and spilled dirt words with his foul mouth. However, he felt something was strange. The good dot looking girl whom he had just beaten didn't have any expression of fear. She was actually smiling weirdly at him. There seemed to be a kind of ridicule and gloating in her smile. As if she was silently saying. Idiot. Was she provoking him? How could Xiao Lu's pride bear it? He immediately reached out and caught Lin Mumu's hair. Lu Yuanyuan was scared silly and anxiously tried to push away the man's arm. Suddenly, Lin Mumu whispered a word in her ear. Cry. Lu Yuanyuan hadn't reacted yet when another powerful push came from Xiao Lu. 
Lu Yuanyuan didn't understand what was her purpose but she already felt extremely wronged in her heart. After hearing the word, she immediately started crying loudly, and the more she cried, the more miserable she looked as she started to gasp for breath, her crying sound echoed loudly in the quiet evening. Chapter 30.2 Mocking Smile, Part 2, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 30, Mocking Smile, Part 2, A Moment Later, Several Police Cars Drove Over the heading car's door was roughly opened and a young man in black rushed to help Lin Mumu out of Xiao Lu's grasp and pushed him away before rushing to Nandu Hotel's entrance and punching Duan Haoyang on the face. Another senior police officer started shouting loudly. Is your police truncheon made for fighting little girls? The three police officers heard the voice, and instantly were frightened just like a mouse seeing a cat, they didn't dare keep up their arrogant acts anymore. Lin Mumu started sobbing while begging for help. You are a good people, right? You will take justice in our stead, right? That we are students of Beijing University. Our classmate got drunk and just got out of Fei Shang to go back to school. Their leader saw our friend and insisted on pulling our classmate Xiao Qin to the hotel to book a room. We refused to let him, and they ganged on us together, saying the long dark nights were lonely and they would take us to accompany them overnight at the station. Xiao Qin is over there. Quickly go save her. My classmate is very beautiful, I am afraid she'll be bullied by a beast. Lin Mumu knows that and Xiao Qin was saved, but still pretended to anxiously point at the hotel. Is this really true? This was the director of the north of the city's police station. He didn't expect that the people under his own administration would do such lowly things. How could we joke about our classmates' reputation? We are students of Beijing University, we didn't expect to be bullied at the doorstep of our own school. Lin Mumu's voice barely fell when Chen Fangya and Lu Yuanyuan had already burst into mournful and miserable weeps. The two little girls didn't know Lin Mumu's purpose, they merely felt the lingering fear after the scary experience they've just been through, and were feeling extremely wronged, crying was not necessarily a sign of weakness, but rather an emotional outlet for stressful feelings. At this time, An Ming Xian had already supported back the muddled and limp and Xiao Qin. Duan Haoyang was beaten into a pulp by two punches of his and a kick to his stomach. He was now painfully rolling on the ground. Chapter 31.1 Still Wants to Argue, Part 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 31, Still Wants to Argue, Part 1, A Beast. He's simply a beast. The old director listened to Lin Mumu's words and got so angry his whole body started trembling in anger. Who gave you the courage, unexpectedly daring to lay your hands on female students? Take a look at yourselves, what kind of people are you? Ganging up to bully the weak no better than hoodlums, and still playing the people's public servants. All right, the few of them were frightened, first send them back to school. And Ming Xian nodded, and deeply looked at Lin Mumu with a probing gaze. This girl was very smart. She knew that he has recording their conversation on the phone, and deliberately provoked Duan Haoyang to say what he shouldn't say. Her later reaction was also very intelligent and clear-headed, she exploited the weakness of their group and used women's tears to pressure them. Along this evidence, Duan Haoyang indeed dragged and Xiao Qin to the hotel and booked a room. The later matters would be easily dealt with. Let's go, follow us to the station to make a written report. The old director of the police station was still thinking of settling this matter privately. Since no accident happened, he would easily placate the few little girls. Dot, we're not going. Lu Yuanyuan firmly shielded Lin Mumu behind her back. Just now, those people said they'd take us to the police station and make us spend the night with them, we won't go to the wolf's nest. Help, the police are seizing people. Chen Fangya shouted at the top of her lungs, and the students from Yanjing University and China University who passed by all stopped to cheer Chen Fangya and stayed in a deadlock to prevent the police from taking them away. If there is anything to ask, just ask here, what do you mean by taking a few little girls to the police station at night? Moreover, 
It's not our Beijing University's people that are making trouble, the policeman was actually the one trying to drag the female student into the hotel. Shameless. Indecent. Didn't expect police officers were this kind of trash. As they say, don't wash your dirty linen in public. The students were a very special community, not only was there solidarity among them, they had the school's protection as well as the national great attention as they were highly valued. TN, idiom leaning private slash family shames must not be spread outside. Chapter 31.2 Still wants to argue, part 2, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 31, still wants to argue, part 2, even in Ming Xian was a little flabbergasted, these little girls could actually make this thing into such a big matter. Although he was also a member of the police system, at the moment, he hoped to make a fuss about the matter, and the bigger the better. With the support of the school's seniors, Lin Mumu did not talk much, she merely accompanied Chen Fangya and Lu Yuanyuan while pitifully holding in Xiaoqin and crying miserably. Director, you've seen in Xiaoqin before, she's the captain's girlfriend and frequently came to visit him at the station, we didn't have the ability to block his path. Contrary to what one might expect, Xiao Lu was actually quite smart, and quickly stated the crucial point in a single sentence. And Xiao Qin is a self-respected girl with a clean body. She's still a virgin which proved she wasn't very fond of that person. Even if he was her boyfriend, he cannot just force people. This is attempted rape. Lin Mumu was not willing to be outdone. Chen Fangya argued even more strongly. You're spouting nonsense, and Xiao Qin said today that she broke up with her boyfriend. Since they already broke up, why would he drag her into the hotel, what was he up to? What could he possibly say to an unconscious drunk young woman in a hotel room? And when we stopped him from taking her, they didn't only threaten us, but also hit us. Look at Lin Mumu's arm, the truncheon left a deep red mark. Yuan Yuan's arm is also bleeding. They simply wanted to snatch people. At this point, An Ming Xian had already dragged over the beaten up Duan Hai Young, along with the hotel's record and his phone recording, he indeed booked a room at Nandu Hotel, and also has a motive for committing the crime. Big brother, listen to me, how could I dare bully Xiao Qin, she's the eldest daughter of An Jiao. I just wanted to give her a pleasant surprise and talk to her. If you guys don't believe me you can go to the room I booked and check, there is a cake and a gift. Chapter 32.1 Body Search, Part 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 32, Body Search, Part 1, Duan Haoyang was actually pretty shrewd. First, he exposed An Mingxian and An Xiaoqin's identities, and then insinuated An Mingxian was abusing his authority to obtain personal gain and protect his little sister's name, afterwards, he mentioned the objects in the hotel room. He had just been in that room with another woman, it was obvious there would be those girly girls. However, Lin Mumu suddenly reached out and felt in Xiaoqin's breath under her nose, then she pointed at Duan Haoyang and clearly shouted. Quickly do a body search. He has knockout drugs on his body. Before Duan Haoyang could react, and Ming Xian had already pushed him to the ground once more, and publicly removed Duan Haoyang's police uniform. Afterwards he started trembling all over in shock. Sure enough, a little bottle fell out from his pocket. This time, everyone at the scene was dumbfounded, nobody was foolish enough to ignore what that thing was. No wonder this and Xiao Qin was unconscious and incapable of standing on her own, even when one got drunk, they wouldn't end up in such a half-dead state without the least bit of awareness. What a disgusting police officer! This is forcing a muddled university female student. Looking for a boyfriend yet ending up with a beast, you really can't judge a man by his clothing, Che. Tn, instead of Che, the Chinese sound for clicking one's tongue in despite is Zs. Binov Khan The previous three police officers realized that things were getting out of hands and cleverly quickly changed their stances. We really didn't know that the Captain Duan was such a person. We just happened to pass by when we were patrolling the area. Captain Duan said that these students attacked the police, and we only tried to defend law and order. 
Shut up. The old director was almost breaking down. These explanations could be said privately in the police station, but now, with so many onlooking students gathered around, every sentence they said could hold many mistakes. All right, it's already late. These students should go back to sleep first. If there is any need for your cooperation with the investigation, we will go inquire at your school tomorrow. And Ming Xian felt sorry distressed for his little sister and promptly spoke up. Good. Lin Mumu also didn't like the feeling of being watched by a crowd. She supported and Xiao Qin and went back towards the school. Chapter 32.2 Body Search, Part 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio Chapter 32, Body Search, Part 2, and Ming Xian was still worried about and Xiao Qin and drove them all to the school hospital. Oh, that's right, just now, who called me on the phone? And Ming Xian had clearly heard Lin Mumu's voice but still asked nonetheless. It was Lu Yuanyuan. Lin Mumu quickly spoke out, Lu Yuanyuan is Xiao Qin's best friend, she was also firmly holding on to Xiao Qin from start to end, and didn't let the bad guy drag her away. Lu Yuanyuan was indeed badly hurt this time, and her clothes were even torn at a few places. She was already dizzy and tired by the time she got into the car, so she quickly fell asleep. And Ming Xian looked at Lin Mumu again through the rear view mirror. The girl looked delicate and pretty and seemed like a very pure and simple female student, but her performance today was truly outstanding. Were it not for An Ming Xian being a member of the SWAT, he likely wouldn't find out about Lin Mumu's little movements. TN, SWAT stands for Special Weapons and Tactics, but the ROS could also mean riot police. Lin Mumu also sensed that An Ming Xian was staring at her and quickly bowed her head to play on her phone. Please read rightful translations by A. Tice at foxaholic.blog The situation a few minutes ago had been really dangerous, so Lin Mumu didn't have the time to pay attention to her phone. At this time, there were unexpectedly a few dozen missed calls, all from Yun Ting. Lin Mumu was still looking if he had sent any text message when the phone abruptly started ringing again. Lin Mumu subconsciously answered the call. Mumu. N. Since there were still outsiders around, she didn't call Yun Ting's name. Are you okay? Are you injured anywhere? He was really well informed. Injured. Lin Mumu did not lie to him. I was hit by the police truncheon. It was still a little painful a moment ago but I already don't feel it anymore. The arm shouldn't be broken, Duviko Lin Mumu. Yun Ting was really anxious, and he couldn't help but raise his voice slightly. Today, I was beaten and almost taken by police officers to spend the night with them at the station. Yet, you're still this fierce to me. Just listening to her voice, Yun Ting could already imagine Lin Mumu childishly pouting her mouth. He immediately tried making his voice as soft and gentle as possible. Mumu, where are you? Atai's corner. Ah, uh, I love those moments where Lin Mumu obediently tells the truth, the main cause of misunderstandings is when people don't speak truthfully from the start, and end up thinking too much of things. I just wish she also came out to him about her rebirth directly, and since he also remembers their previous life, they would definitely surpass obstacles and enjoy their mutual feelings x. Chapter 33.1 Let me hear your voice, Part 1 you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 33, Let Me Hear Your Voice, Part 1, I'm alright, don't worry, we went to the school hospital, I'm really okay. I'll behave obediently for the next two days, I still have to take an exam the day after tomorrow. I certainly can't lose face for the master. N. Yun Ting's voice sounded a little lower. Lin Mumu knew Yun Ting's temper. Every time he was keeping silent for a long while, he was brewing a big storm. She immediately acted like a spoiled child and softly said. Lu Rinjia, I'm really okay. The matter concerns my roommate, she was drugged unconscious by a man almost dragged into the hotel. Since An Ming Xian was an outsider, Lin Mumu didn't call out Yun Ting's name, but used their previous joking nickname instead. 
As soon as he heard this, Yun Ting was even more nervous, and even somewhat afraid. Even if Lin Mu Mu wasn't bullied, the danger was still close to her. Moreover, this matter had completely escaped Yun Ting's scope of control. ENV Lin Mu Mu's first year of university should have been relatively calm. How could she suddenly get an additional exam and also sustain injuries? What could possibly happen next? The feeling of not being in control made Yun Ting inexplicably nervous. Hello. Were you listening to me? My classmate's older brother is a member of the police system, he looks very powerful. His younger sister was bullied and he will certainly handle it properly by himself. You're not allowed to get involved. Hey, today's matter, to speak frankly, was merely a dog blood drama and some gossip, do you want to listen? And, I love listening to what you say. Lin Mumu really talked to him about everything that happened that day in full details. She knows that even if she doesn't say it, Yun Ting will investigate it. Instead of letting him hear from outsiders, it was better to tell him by herself, and take the opportunity to complain a bit. In their past life, because of their lack of communication, there was always someone talking in between her and Yun Ting. After speaking for a while, Lin Mumu finished her story, but didn't forget to ironically add at the end. This kind of man could also walk through the back door, it really opened my eyes. He unexpectedly succeeded in becoming a police officer, and even seems to be a captain. Chapter 33.2 Let me hear your voice, part 2, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 33 let me hear your voice, part 2, who is going through the back door. And Ming Xian deeply looked at the radiant and delighted expression of Lin Mumu as she spoke to her boyfriend on the phone. This little girl was truly not simple, was she pointing at the mulberry tree and cursing the locust tree? Tian, to scold SB indirectly. Just by this quick glance, and Ming Xian was somewhat distracted. Just a moment ago, he felt that this little girl had quite the strong aura, but when talking on the phone, her voice was especially soft and refreshing, like a light breeze scratching at one's heart. Perhaps the person on the other end of the phone made her happy as her face turned even more beautiful and brighter, like the sunshine sprinkling over a courtyard, giving off a sense of beauty in a dreamland. There was even a tiny feeling of wishing he could replace the person she was talking to. Lin Mumu wasn't aware and Ming Xian was observing her, she was wholeheartedly focusing all of her little mind on Yun Ting. She knew Yun Ting's temper, he definitely wanted to know her situation. So she straightforwardly narrated all of what happened to her in minute detail so as to avoid his imagination running wild. The only thing that wasn't easy to say was that she was hurt, so she said it as softly and relaxed as possible. The next time you run into trouble, call me. What Yun Ting cared the most about was that Lin Mu Mu met with Mishap but unexpectedly didn't tell him. The call for help was made, but she actually called another man. And, I know. Lin Mu Mu didn't want to argue with him over this little detail, she obediently and honestly praised. It was my wrong before, I was angered by how their group acted. I know your troop's purpose is to defend the country and protect the people, and these were just a few black sheep. At least my Lu Rinjia is a good person. Listening to Lin Mumu's praise, Yun Ting's mood was even more indescribable, his voice carried unlimited warmth. Xiao Mutu, have you arrived at the hospital yet? Don't hang up the phone, let me listen to your voice again. All right, all right. I discovered you're even more long winded than my master. Lin Mumu knew that Yun Ting was trying to hear what the doctor would say and deliberately told her she mustn't hang up the phone. Chapter 34.1 Yun Ting's Bottom Line, Part 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 34, Yun Ting's Bottom Line, Part 1, In order to reassure Yun Ting, Lin Mumu didn't hang up. Then, he heard the doctor say. It's a little swollen, but fortunately, the bone wasn't broken. Just make sure to keep it protected the next two days and you mustn't exert too much strength. After that, Yun Ting finally felt relieved and hung up the phone. But just after hanging up with Lin Mumu, 
Yun Ting immediately called Chiu Feng to understand today's situation as he still hadn't gotten his report. Up till now, Chiu Feng was still a little excited. Second brother, you didn't see it, but second sister. In. Law was really, really smart. You can rest assured, it's unlikely anything would happen, I'm also carefully keeping watch outside. I didn't expect the bastard to suddenly use his truncheon, if that kid Ming Xian hadn't come, I would have personally come out to instantly teach him a lesson. They were indeed bastards, I didn't expect them to act in such an undisciplined and out of control way regardless of the law and morals. The one who used his truncheon, try to drag him out earlier, I will go back and handle him personally. On the call with Lin Mumu a while ago, Yun Ting tried to press down his feelings as much as possible. Now that his vicious temper was completely released, it was really dreadful. Second brother, isn't it just a little punk, is it worthwhile for you to do the job personally? Chiu Feng was a little anxious. Let third brother pay a few people to handle him properly and make him unable to walk in a straight line ever again a hurry, all right, no one can move Lin Mumu, this is my bottom line. You're my second brother, I'll listen to you. Fourth Master Chiu solemnly nodded. Pay attention to An Mingxian. Yun Ting suddenly said another sentence. An Mingxuan's younger sister is sister. In. Law's roommate. Sister. In. Law really played the role of the hero saving the beauty, right? Chiu Feng barely said a few words when he suddenly realized what his family's second brother meant by, pay attention, what else could it mean? He lightly chuckled and said, Second brother, you can be at ease, and Ming Xian is a complete ice cube, not at all interested in women. I heard my younger brother say that an Ming Xian may be more interested in men, especially that Lin Tianlang. The two are especially close.